the heck, man? Hey, I need to build this WJ. I'll tell you what. If you can beat the Comanche in a tug of war, we'll build your WJ. It's on. Hold this for me real quick. Watch this. Okay, now shut me in. <laughs> huh. <laughs> Who did that? <laughs> I'm gonna blame that on you. I think that took teamwork. <laughs> I'm trapped. I can't get out. <laughs> That was a little oversight on our part. I think we were supposed to have that a little more forward. Could we have put that forward? No, but maybe backward? Could have put it further back, maybe. You're just not allowed to have passengers in here. Or, you just have to roll down the window and reach, reach out. out. <laughs> Hey guys, Matt here with Bleakman Jeep. Welcome back to another episode of how to build a roll cage for a minivan. No, just kidding. This is Project WJ Grand Cherokee build that we're working on and we've got some more exciting roll cage build coming to you today. Let's check out what we accomplished since the last video. In the last video, we added the DNC Extreme cage built specifically for a WJ, but since Josh likes to roll down mountains frequently, we decided we were gonna add a little bit more to that. So here is the main cage here, and then we added this uh, vertical support here. We added an X, that X also comes off of the shock towers to give that a little more support so that thing's not wobbling while we're bouncing over the dunes at 80 miles an hour, or more like 10. <laughs> right here, what is that bar for? Well, that bar goes out to the outside because on the outside we've got a panel that's gonna sit right here with a tube across it. Whenever you smash into a tree with that though, it would just kind of crumple the whole side in, but we are attaching that to the cage so that it won't go anywhere. Come check out inside here. So there is the main hoop of the DNC cage and then the harness bar. We've also decided to add an X for bracing. The reason that you want to put an X in there is to keep it from tweaking side to side whenever you do a, a hard rollover and land on your side. Uh, if there's not an X, the whole thing can just kind of go like this. So with that X in there, we've got one in the front, one in the back. This thing's going to be really stout. X's make triangles and triangles are strong. <laughs> but you have to complete the X. So you make an X like this and then you have to complete that into triangles. On the top here, we have holes cut in the roof and we're gonna go through the roof and then that's where we're gonna have a halo on the top and that's what we're gonna be working on today. So what we're gonna do is put a halo on the top and then come down with a tube all the way down the side here for the A pillar. That is gonna attach right here to this piece that we added on in the last episode for the slider. We built that out a little farther so that the tube can go there. We're gonna work our way down to the front bumper over here. We'll have to have a bar coming across the top, a bar coming across the windshield, a bar above the windshield, and to do that, the WJ is very curvy. It's not like a Cherokee that's got a lot of straight lines. It's got a lot of curves, so check this out. All right, this guy is a tubing roller from Harbor Freight. It comes with dies, it comes with a big wheel. Where's the wheel? Found it. All right, so you got two dies in there, one die in here, and a big giant wheel, and you crank this down and you use that to roll a tube. So a tube bender just bends tube like in 90 degrees. And you can make some kind of curved sections, but you have to do it in bends. This is actually gonna roll the tube for a nice roll, like 
Think about if you're making a Volkswagen roll cage, right? It's gonna be really nice and round. And the same goes for a WJ, because it's basically a minivan. So what we've done is buy this Harbor Freight bender as a starting point, but then we're gonna add a little bit of swag to that. Let me show you what I'm talking about. All right, that is the swag kit. So here's what you guys are gonna do if you want an Uber tuber roller. You're gonna buy the tube roller from Harbor Freight. With the swag kit, you're gonna need this. So this is an electric pipe threader. You're gonna need a bottle jack. We're gonna get rid of this. We won't need this anymore because after we're finished, it's gonna be an electric operated tube roller. The bottle jack is gonna go here, so we don't need to use this anymore. And then we've got some extra things. So this is gonna add some wings to this. It's gonna make it wider. It's gonna give you a new axle. We've also got new dies. So the Harbor Freight roller doesn't come with inch and three quarter dies, and that's a pretty popular size in the off-road world. We're gonna be using inch and three quarter tubing. So we've got inch and three quarter dies that are gonna go onto this thing. And then there's a couple more components in this kit from Swag that is going to make this into the Uber Tuber Roller. That's just what I'm calling it. The kit from Swag is 265, I think. And then how much do you think that was? Like 100 bucks or something? And then this is probably, what, 15 bucks? So, you can buy for $1,000 from Swag, like their ultimate tube roller kit that doesn't involve the Harbor Freight. The Hulk. The Hulk, is it the Hulk? I think it's the Hulk. The Hulk kit. But if you're on a budget, I think this was more around four or 500 bucks for all this stuff. Um, it's gonna require some welding, so we will get started on that and show you how this is put together. up with so that is the Harbor Freight tube roller with the added swag extra packs and uh, this thing look at these dies they are so much better than the Harbor Freight dies those are nice now all we have to do is learn how to roll too because <laughs> Joshua and I have not done this before so We'll, we'll see how this goes. I've watched some videos. Matt's watched some videos. I read a 28 page forum post this morning, so we're pretty much experts now. I think we got it. Professionals. <laughs> All right, what you want to start out with? Uh, I think we should start out with the bars over the top, the tubes over the top. All right, so we got our little smokestacks sticking out here from the, from the interior of the roll cage. We've got these guys that come out of the top. We're gonna make bars that curve over the top. If you can't tell, the top of this Jeep is, is just rolled in all directions. It's rolled this way, it's rolled this way. So we need to make some tubes and we'll start off with the easiest. These guys going over the top here, we need two of those. So from what I understand, from here to here is not gonna get bent at all. So if you want to continue the bend all the way to the end of where it's gonna get welded, then you need at least like eight inches extra tube on either side. If you wanted to cut down on that, we could move these in, but every time you do that, you run a more of a chance of deforming it, I think, they get, and it gets more difficult. And the bearings are taking a lot more force. Yes. The further you move those in. But I don't think we need bends all the way to the end because we could just roll from here to here and then have kind of semi-straight sections on the end. We'll see. <laughs> Let's measure. All right, so we're gonna go from about there to about here. I'm gonna say we need about 56 inches. Where are you going from? You're like four inches out past the Jeep. 
I know, you need extra. Need extra, okay. I'm gonna say we start with 56 inches, unless you just wanna say we don't need any extra. No, I don't wanna say that. <laughs> 56. Have any of these been cut so far? No? Nope. Okay, are you ready? Ready. I don't think I've got enough pressure on <laughs> It's bent <laughs> You know what we need is a straight edge. Oh, it's getting there very slightly. What we don't know is how much pressure to apply in between goes at it. You know what I'm gonna do to make this easier? So, this is backwards. If it's on here, it goes this way, puts on this side, goes this way. You know what it says? No. Your arrow is pointing the same way as theirs. So if I got it, yeah, but it's off, it's backwards. It's the area you can see, not the area you can't see. No, it's the area you can't see, because that's pointed that way, You're and it's going that this way. way. If I put it on this side, oh. it's going to go okay. towards the, the arrow. Do you understand? I understand. <laughs> okay, how bent is that? Because we might need to check it on the Jeep. Yeah. It's not much of a bend. That might be it. Have you ever seen people that get a hold of these tubing rollers and then the next cage that they make, every tube is just is rolled, rolled and rolled and rolled <laughs> and it just comes out like a circular cage? There was one at SEMA one year. A guy had a cage that just had tubes just rolled in circles everywhere. It looked like flower patterns or whatever. <laughs> it's crazy. I guess it could go a little more to match the Jeep. Yeah. What do you think? It definitely could. Keep rolling? Keep rolling. Rolling, 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 rolling. Rolling, 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 rolling. So what Josh is doing there is trying to keep this tube straight. So we've got the top line of where the seam is. You can tell there's a weld seam at the top of this tube. We're keeping that upright and he's making sure that stays upright because what can happen is it can roll in there and start to twist so that tube would start to spiral as we were bending it. Sort of like that spiral there. That's what happens whenever you don't keep it vertical. Definitely starting to look curved now. Yeah, it's more of a curve for sure. I just don't know how much more. Oh, look at that. I got it. I think that's, that's just about it. Uh -huh. Look at that, folks. We have rolled our first tube. <laughs> <laughs> that's pretty cool. I want to show you the difference between a rolled tube. So that's the tubing roller. That's what we did just now. The tubing bender, it bends the tube like this. So you've got a die that has a certain um, radius. So this is like a five inch radius die. 
So it's gonna bend that up to 90 degrees or 180 degrees, depending on the die that you have, but it'll just bend that in a five inch circumference, like that. We're gonna keep at this, get a few more tubes built, and we'll be right back. All right guys, let me show you what we're gonna do now that we've got our curve. So, we've got two of these curved to match the roof line. But we're gonna have a tube that comes alongside the door here and you can see the body line kind of kicks down a little bit more. So now what we're gonna do is add to our roll tube, we're gonna add a bend. So we can still put this in our bender and we're gonna kick that down 10 degrees right there. All right, so I've got a line marked there where the tube is, a line marked where I wanna start to bend here all right if you guys want to know the specifics on how to operate that machine i'm pretty sure matt has a video or two <laughs> probably scorpion crawler build yeah i'm not getting too detailed right now because there's a lot to it but if you want to learn more on how to do it exactly the, all the scorpion crawler series goes in depth on how to bend too we want that bend to be in plane with the other bend so he's going to make sure that that is rolled out and not curving up or down. It should be level. I'm gonna take the slack out of that. Make sure it's lined up still. I'm gonna tighten right there. Make sure we're at zero with this little piece of wire. And then we're gonna bend to 12 degrees. We're gonna go 10 degrees, but we're gonna do a little extra because of that snapback. It would help if I tightened it. That's why it's not building any pressure. All right, now we have a bend in our roll. You do that on the other side and you end up with two bends in your roll. Now check this out. That is what we're looking for. It's gonna bend down just with the body line and fit perfect to the body line that is the goal. <laughs> Making a lot of noise in here. Uh -huh. These little guys right here, you'll have a bunch of those in your shoes by the end of the day. Mm -hmm. <laughs> They're like little shoe staples. It's time for food. Oh, what do you got for us today? Chicken, cauliflower, and potatoes. Uh, everything looks good except for that cauliflower. Matt, you're going to eat that cauliflower. <laughs> <laughs> it's a little bland now that I'm looking down at it. Yeah. But deal with it. <laughs> Go ahead. Waiting with anticipation. When I was driving to the welding store the other day, these two guys jumped in the truck and stole everything. They were pirates of the Caribbean. Alright guys, check out what we're doing now. We have tacked this bar onto that bar just temporarily to check the door clearance. We're also cutting these down so that this will sit real tight to the body, but not so tight that the door doesn't open still. So right there, the door just barely opens still. Ah, uh, who's calling me? Let's see who it is. Oh, it's Matt's Off-Road Recovery. You're on video, what's up? Milton, Florida? But, uh, what's going on there? There's a guy that's got some stuff that I might be buying and he won't ship it. So, it says local pickup only. <laughs> okay, what is it? Corvair parts. Corvair parts? Totally off brand for you. 
Well, that's boring. Okay, I completely lost where I was at. <laughs> but uh, what we need to do next is to tack these, I think, and then pull that out, weld it, and then put it back. Because I can't get a weld underneath that tube. It is just really close to the body. What say you? Yeah, that's the only way. This is the way? This is the way. Okay, so we're gonna have to make sure that's straight, square, level, even, before we tack that. Okay, it's 38 inches exactly. 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. So put it on this side. this if you want to start marking the uh, verticals on the back one. Sometimes since this is so permanent I feel like saying do you tube A happen to hold tube B forever and ever? <laughs> okay they do. Check that out. Kaboom! That's perfect. I've never gotten such a tight fitting cage to the body line. I think that roller's gonna come in handy. Should keep doing mini wrench. <laughs> guys it is Sunday but I'm working on a little side project this weekend something really cool happened Windrock the off-road park it's like the largest off-road park in the entire country they have a general store and they've decided that they want to sell the freedom winch line in their general store which is super super rad but I just don't want this hanging on a hook I want to be able to display it so we're gonna make a display rack on the top of that rack, what I'd like to have is a fair lead so that people can get their hands on the Freedom Winch line, kind of play with it, see how it works, and then below that will be the Freedom Winch lines themselves so that they can take to the counter. Above that, we'll have a big bleeping Jeep thing. So, that's what we're building today. All right, let's get this thing built and I'll show you how it works, but first I need to find level here. This is a post level, but it works really good for building Jeeps as well.
right, guys, what do you think about my Freedom Winch Line display? I haven't said yes to this yet, but I hope to have it at the Windrock General Store pretty soon. They are going to have the Freedom Winch Lines there, but if they say yes to this display, next time you're there, check it out and see if it's there at the, uh, at the General Store. So I made this so that you could pull this out. It's gravity feed. It pulls itself back in and it's got some attachment points so you can play with it on the display rack and then there's quarter inch lines for the side by sides and ATVs and three eighths lines for the Jeeps and trucks. So let me know what you think. I still need to put a uh, Freedom Winch Line sticker here and here I'll probably do something like that's on the front and the back of the Freedom Winch Lines and it's got a little scan here thing. I don't know if you can scan that from your phone or your computer, but if you want more information, people can scan that. So that's it for today. It's getting dark out there, but tomorrow we're going to be back on Project Bumble. Here we go. All right, guys, it's Monday. It's Monday, right? It's Monday. It's Monday, and we're back at work here on the WJ. Check out what we've got going on here. So we've been using the roller and this WJ is very curved. It is so curved, in fact, that that tube sitting on the top is a foot inboard of the door handles. Good job, Josh. Just keep holding that there while I talk. But we've got that thing rolled to the curve of the top and then we've rolled it more for the curve of, um, what would you call it, the window? So there we're gonna make a joint and come down here. But what we want to do now is show you how we came up with that. And for that, we've got this 10 foot stick that we're going to start rolling. So let's get started on that. All right, so you got us, is there a seam in this? Put that towards the top. We're going to start by adding a little pressure here. Josh on the other end is going to keep it straight so that it does not try to turn and make a spiral. What we want is just a nice low curve. Are you ready? Yep. We're about to hit the door. <laughs> All right, now you just flip this switch and then you go another pump and a half. We're gonna go back the other direction. You can see a little curve in that already. Let me get a straight edge. There we go, look at that. We're getting our curve on there. How much curve did we have on the other piece? More. Are you sure? Mm -hmm. If we curve too much, it's gonna be over curved. Put it in backwards. <laughs> All right. All right, so keep in mind that the last, what is that, eight inches or so is not gonna get bent. So we've added a little extra tube, but even still, it's not gonna be really noticeable unless you have a big giant curve. All right, so the hardest part of building a roll cage is not the one side, it's getting the second side exactly equal to the first side. So we need to take that out and compare it to this tube we're trying to build two tubes exactly the same, one for each side of the Jeep. That looks really darn close. So it needs a little more, huh? But we should check the other side of your Jeep, because maybe that side is not as curved as this side. It's possible. <laughs> needs more curve. <laughs> Check that. Go again. Gonna over bend. You over bent it. <laughs> you over bent it. My goodness. Maybe the other side of the Jeep is more bent. It might be more bent. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> Maybe we should check it again. <laughs> it actually follows it pretty good. Uh, it's too bent at the front, but it follows it the rest of the way out pretty well. Why is it so close on the front side? Might have to do some unbending. All right. Trial and error. All right, we're gonna try to unbend this just ever so slightly. You ready? Yep. We're gonna have a spaghetti noodle by the time we're done. <laughs> it's gonna be dead on this time. <laughs> Took too much bend out of it. <laughs> that thing is powerful. I just barely squeezed on it. Okay. I wonder how much bend is just gravity. I think that's pretty darn close. Oh yeah. Alright guys, so let me show you how this is gonna work. We've got that bend pretty much down. Now we need to bend more here, but at the same time, it doesn't just bend straight down, it also bends out to follow the curve of the windshield line here. So what we need to do is mark the top of the tube where the bend is here and then mark the back side of this curve so that when we put it in next time, the curve is gonna come along here and then it's gonna kick out because we're gonna put it in at a different angle on the roller. I need to get my yellow pen. All right, so here is that original tube that we bent. You can see the, the top line is right there. But when we held it up against the Jeep, marked this line, then we put it in the bender and rolled it this direction. So that bend comes up here and then it swings out that way. And that's all because we just made a line on a different spot for the top of the bender, if that makes sense. Let's see what's this that it's about 40 degrees difference. All right, so we're gonna mark on this tube the same markings we had on our original tube. So 16 and a half, we're gonna bend between here and here a little bit more, but we're gonna leave this at the original bend. All right, and then 19 from there to there. So that should be our new vertical right there. All right, if you're confused by that, so are we, but basically the way I got the first measurement on the other side was just to hold this up with the correct curve and then we made a line on the back side of where this needs to start curving down for the windshield and you can see that now is right here. So if we bend it right here, it's gonna start curving down and out this direction which is what we need, hopefully. Fingers crossed. <laughs> it's amazing how that first tube is so simple, but then trying to match it on the other side seems way more difficult somehow, even though you already have one. So now when we put this in here, we're gonna use those lines to go up instead of the weld line, which was right here. And we're only gonna bend from this mark to that mark because that bend is good. We just need more bend right there. getting somewhere not too much further just a little more bend here and then that thing will be pointed right down with the glass all right guys check this out that right there is dead on. Look at that, that looks good. So we just kept checking it, checking it, checking it until it was perfect. I kind of like that. I 
think we might want to leave those tails on like that. But what we did is we welded the lift gate open. We can't close it because that's kind of funny. But man, that looks good. I don't think we could have got a better match if we tried. Just a few more bars to go. Just a few. All right guys, we got those bars, but now we gotta make these bars. So we did a little diagram on a piece of paper a few days ago. This is what we came up with. So we've got that one, that one. We need to make one over the windshield and then we'll work on this giant X that's gonna go across. We need this back bar back here and then we've gotta work on around the bottom of the windshield, which is gonna be difficult in this case because as the hood comes up, it kind of sweeps way up here you have to clear the windshield wipers and the hood at the same time. So we're thinking right through there. Oh, somebody left you some big Newtons. Give me snacks. We're gonna work on this rear bar first in front of the hatch. So we've measured, added a little extra, about 55 inches from here to there. We're gonna put a curve in it to go around this and then we'll see where we're at. Is it just me or do you only have two sticks of tube left? I have one and a half. <laughs> I think you're gonna need some more tube now that I see that it's running low. Oh yeah, that is only half a tube. We're gonna need about 18 more of those and you're gonna be weighing in at about 3,000 pounds of tube by the time we're done with this thing. <laughs> All right, Josh, so the trick on getting your ends to line up when you cut all the way around the tube like that is to cut it straight. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Look at that, the trick worked. <laughs> Perfect. Now let's hope that grinding wheel or that cutting wheel never explodes and takes you out because mm -hmm. you are straddling that thing. I know, if I'm off to the side, it burns my legs. <laughs> One bar at a time. We'll get there in about another three years. We'll be done with this. Right, guys thank you so much for watching please like subscribe comment and share that really helps us out with this crazy thing called the YouTube algorithm also a huge shout out to our patreons we could not make these videos without you guys if you would like to support bleep and Jeep think about becoming a patreon at patreon.com slash bleep and Jeep or visit the link in the description below our Patreon members get early access to YouTube videos, a Patreon-only content feed that's videos and pictures on a daily or weekly basis, coupon codes for Bleep and Jeep merch, Patreon-only fan rides, and many, many other perks. So huge shout out to you. Thank you guys. We'll see you in the next video.